Hi there. It's Sarah of Get Weaving. Um, and hello if you're a new weaver or <laughs> a not so new weaver. <laughs> what I've been doing is trying to encourage people to uh, weave on their rigid heddle looms and then cut their fabric up and make a garment to wear. So hopefully these videos will help somebody who's new get started so you can look back at the previous ones about setting your loom up and so forth and those who've been weaving for a bit longer and are confident with their looms to um, cut their fabric up and make a garment to wear today i'm wearing t016 it's a funny old day here today is this pattern here Tops and um, and a dress, which my neighbour's son was kind enough to agree to wear. It has a cotton and linen warp and weft. Um, very nice, comfortable on a day like this. So the pattern has tops and a short dress i've put links at the end to my etsy shop so hopefully you'll be able to find those i have tried to link these videos to my shop but for some reason i can't do it at the moment i don't know if it's me or the system but never mind now a little while ago i put a post on facebook and instagram of an idea that i had which is on the dummy behind me at the moment I know the big thing for a lot of weavers is the worry about cutting their fabric. Um, I did do a video called Cutting Without Fear a while ago, which you can find. And there is a booklet as well that you can download and print at home. All sorts of suggestions for how, basically how to stop your fabric from fraying when you cut it. So I had this idea, I thought we're all weaving long, narrow pieces, a bit like a long scarf. And it's the, the curves, cutting the curves that worry people because the uh, warp and the weft start to separate. But cutting a straight line across isn't quite so scary. If you can machine stitch uh, and cut between the lines like it shows here, um, you're fairly okay after you've washed your fabric, obviously. So, what I did was um, bought a top from a charity shop. <laughs> it cost £3. Um, it's cotton. It's quite simple. It's got buttons down the front. And I thought, how about weaving a piece of fabric and then stitching it to the bottom? So what I did was used a commercial piece of fabric. So it's just a, a sort of polyester and cotton mix. And I've pleated it onto the bottom of this purchased top. And I looked at it and I thought, yeah, I quite like that. So um, the pleats, well, the width, no, it's <laughs> the length of this piece of fabric is about one and a half times the width that needs to go round so there's enough to pleat so i worked it out i needed a piece of fabric that would be about 18 inches wide by 80 inches long something like that I can't hold them all up. Um, these are a couple of the warp yarns. I picked colours that uh, I thought would go with the top. So there's an orange one. There's a bit of pink. And as usual, I've done a random threading. There's some green, uh, which pick out the colours in this top. Now, what I would say, though, about um, putting your own weaving onto a, a, an already made garment is don't use T-shirts. Um, because they're likely to drop. Your hand weaving isn't going to be as fine as a T-shirt, I've very much doubt. 
Um, and the other thing is, T-shirts, if you think, stretch. Uh, hand weaving doesn't. So <laughs> I did buy a stretchy top. And then, of course, when I put my weaving on it, I couldn't get it on. So word of warning, <laughs> go for things that aren't stretchy. As usual, I've done a random warp. This is on my 20 inch Ashford Knitters Loom. So, they're the colours on the back. I always have the same yarn oops, on both sides. So, in this case, it's the orange one. That way, your selvages are more likely to behave themselves. Um, <laughs> spot the deliberate mistake. I was setting it up and there was a football match on in the background, so I wasn't really concentrating. I've threaded this loom up many, many times. I threaded it up back to front. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I looked at it. Anyhow, so what I did was, in other words, I wound all the warp onto the front beam, so I had to wind it all the way back with uh, warp separators. I used paper in between. <laughs> it's fine so it had all been threaded in the slots i took it round to the back it's a six sheet project uh which is handy because then i know how far i'm getting on <laughs> so redone it tied to the front because i prefer using ties than leashes and i also put a piece of paper on the front as i'm weaving because it covers up all the knots on the front so everything's all nice and flat <laughs> I wanted a really nice loose set for this. So again, it's a very light piece of fabric to go on the bottom of a, a cotton top. And I've used these three yarns for the weft. Uh, this is a sort of like an eyelash sort of yarn. It's got a bit of texture to it. This is, I think it's silk doesn't have a very good label on it, as usual, out of the stash. Thought it's a pretty colour, though. And this one is called Sublime Silk. It's Tusser Silk. Beautiful. So, as usual, I've weighed everything before I started. So, I set the loom up the whole width, which is about 19 and a half inches. Hopefully, once it's washed, it'll be about 18 inches wide but it's going on the uh, on the garment in this direction so this will be stitched to the bottom of the garment this will be the hem hopefully if my selvages are good enough i won't have to do anything else um so in other words the warp stripes go in this direction and then i'm just weaving random stripes for the other one so these stripes will be going down so you just see there's a very slight difference in the colors this one i quite like uh, with the warp random threading but I only do one pair I never do well not for this anyway so there's only two of each color as it goes across um I didn't want a very very bold stripe in there because the the top has got quite fine stripes so I'm trying to copy that So once the fabric's finished, I'll take it off, stitch the ends, wash it carefully, line dry. Um, I always measure it before and after as well. And then it's going to be going on to this top in pretty much the same way. So what I did with this piece of fabric is folded it in half, marked where the centre was, then folded each side in half and marked where... The side seams were just so that it's roughly even but i quite like that i think that's going to be quite nice and i'll definitely wear it um the fronts obviously this would be the beginning of the weaving and the end of the weaving so i'll put small hems on the two ends
Uh, and then because the buttons are only on the top bit and I'm not going to start fiddling around, it'll be a sort of over tunic, so I'll probably wear it over a pair of jeans. With the weft, I know people talk about beating it into place, but I'm just moving it into place. So the fabric is quite open and loose. I want it to be quite airy. It's a summer garment after all. And I know a lot of beginners hear this expression beating the weft into place. I'm just moving it into place. So I put the shuttle through and then I just move it backwards and then I change the shed. As usual, um, my got three shuttles going, so I just weave for a bit and then cut it off and start the next colour. These I thread, uh, sorry, wind in a figure of eight. So I wind around one side and then around the other side in a figure of eight. And that way the shuttle is nice and thin and flat. Um, and the yarn is building up on the sides. So I just find that that works better that way, winding them on as a figure of eight. Um, I think that's about it for the moment. I don't think this is going to take very long to weave. As I said, it's a six sheet project. I did one yesterday just while I was waiting for the dinner to cook, I think. Um, I'm going to do a bit more tomorrow. So probably by this time next week, it'll be finished. And what I will do then is post pictures on social media. Again, links at the end and maybe even wear it if the weather <laughs> improves pouring with rain today not to worry thank you for watching i hope doing this somebody out there might think oh well i've got a blouse i never wear or a shirt or a dress i could cut the bottom off or something or as i said go to your charity shops they're wonderful um <laughs> in fact i have to admit i bought two tops which i rather like so i'm not going to change them i'm just going to keep them and wear them in the summer um Think about your colours, go through your stash of yarns, don't go and buy anything if you don't have to. Those of us who have been doing this sort of thing a while <laughs> have got a lot of yarn to use. I did, funnily enough, start weaving, if I can find it, no, can't, never mind, with some hand spun cotton, but it looked horrible. It looked like a dishcloth. So I went back to my boxes and I've got five balls of this and just one of this and about two of this. I'm sure that would be enough. Um, it was funny, I thought the white would look nice, but it didn't. So at the beginning, I've got um, about six inch, extra inches. I always have enough to try something just in case I don't like it. So um, I will finish this, wear it, photograph it. <laughs> and then the next video is going to be cutting out simple shapes, squares and rectangles. Again, no curves and how you can make a garment from squares and rectangles. So I'm going to walk through a few ideas. I still don't like garments that just hang. I think, you know, we need a bit of shaping somewhere. So it's going to be how to get round that rather than just having a piece of fabric with a slit cut in the middle. So um, back to some of our original ideas, squares and rectangles, how you can then, yeah, kind of modernise them a little bit. Anyway more ideas. Have a good day. Happy weaving. <laughs> See you soon.